Hi, my name is Sean Olson. Today I'm going to show you how to set up Wallworm with Gmod. This presumes you already have Wallworm installed. If you haven't got it installed, you can find other videos and docs on that. I'm going to click Wallworm and go to Wallworm Settings. Now if you've not set it up for any games, you'll have a bunch of blank paths here. I currently have mine set to CSGO. I'm now going to import Gmod by clicking this Import Game Config File button. And I need to browse for Gmod. I've previously imported the Black Mesa, and you can see a gameconfig.txt file here. But this isn't the one I want. I need to go to Gmod. So I'm going to browse up and go to where Gmod is installed. Inside here, there's a bin folder. I'm going to double click that, and I don't see a gameconfig.txt in here. The reason this is, is it only appears after you've run Hammer. So what I need to do is find that folder on Windows Explorer and double click the hammer icon. And you'll see that when I do that, and it loads up hammer, I can minimize that. You'll see that immediately that file now exists. So I'm going to double click that file. And now you'll see there's an entry in this list that says Gary's Mod. I'm going to select that and hit load selected preset. We have a couple things to do now. First, we're going to create a project folder for this. So I'm going to click this project button, and it's going to show me my computer. And I'm going to find a folder on my computer where I want to create a project folder for um, this. And I have already previously found one and made one called Gmod. And I'm going to click that button here. So now that's the folder in use in this game. I'm going to hit Save. So now it knows to always save my assets into this path. Now we're going to do one last thing, and this is so that we're not contaminating your Gmod folders with uh, the files that you're working on. We're going to create a local game info file. So we're going to click this button, and it asks me if I want to use these paths. I'm going to hit yes. It then copied to my clipboard a, a line that I need to paste into the games mount.config. I'm just going to enter a new line and hit Control V to paste that line here. Now the first part of this can be called whatever, but what matters here is this line. This is the line that shows uh, where my local game config is. I'm going to save this file, and now Gmod knows to look for all of the assets in this path. After we've done that, all of our assets are contained in the project folder. If I right click the project folder button, it's going to open it up. And you're going to see in here that, that there's a Gary's mod. And this contains our new gameinfo.txt file. And there's also a now an SDK content. This is where all of your VMFs and QCs and SMDs will go to. If we go into the Gary's mod and right click this game info, we might need to do a little bit of editing of this file. So this is a straight copy with a couple additions from the actual uh, one. We're going to want to do a couple things here because we already have this path here set. We're going to get rid of this Gary's Mod path right here, or we could have made an absolute, but we're going to do that. And again, anything that has Gary's Mod at the beginning, we can remove from here. In fact, some things we can just remove all right that we don't need in here. And again, this is not the actual Gmod path. This is used for Wallworm. And this would mean it's looking for anything in Gary's Mod and under add-ons. And again, because we don't need a Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod, Gary's Mod, three entries of Gary's Mod, anyone prefix with Gary's Mod you can remove from here. Also, if you want to add other games, the assets from other games, for example, if we want to add TF2, I'm going to just paste from my clipboard one that I had earlier. You can paste the path to any of the VPKs that are used in a game. So in this case, uh, I have TF2 installed at this location, and this is the VPK. So you'll need to do an absolute path to each of the VPKs for each game. So you, if you want to use Left 4 Dead or CS Source or CSGO, you would paste the path to the uh, VPK used in that game. You would then save your file. Now. Uh, unfortunately, when you save your file, your game info, with Wallworm already pointing to it, uh, the changes won't take effect right away. And I'm sorry, I actually added a node here in between recordings, and we'll get back to that in a second. So, in order to 
load the changes, we'll have to load up one of our other presets. So I'm going to load CSGO. And now that CSGO loaded, I'm going to load back in Gary's mod. And now that we've loaded this, our changes should have taken effect. So uh, you can always load props in your game if you change the creation category to Wallworm and choose Source Model. You can click out here and add one, and we can load models from the game now. And uh, you can see here that we have all of the assets from the game. And if we want to load Alex in here, just double click her, and here she is. So this is loading assets into the game. But now I'm going to show we're going to create a new prop from scratch and send it to the game. So we can create models in Max. We can import models. We can do whatever we want. I'm going to use a utility you can get from Script Spot called Debris Maker. It's a free plugin. It lets you uh, create all kinds of things. And I'm just going to create some corrugated metal. And I'm not going to change any of the defaults here. I'm just going to keep it and hit generate. So uh, it's going to generate 10 metal panels here. And I'm going to, you can see these in the screen here. And they're fairly high poly at the moment. Change my statistics to show total plus selection. So uh, each one of these is a few thousand. These are kind of high poly. So I'm just going to real quickly add a Pro Optimizer on them to reduce the polys. So I selected them all and I'm choosing Pro Optimizer. And I want to keep the textures on these. And we probably want to keep the UV boundaries. I'm not sure if what the UVs look like this, but we're just going to keep it. And then I'm going to reduce the poly count on these until it's something a little bit, oh, that's too far, a little bit more respectable. These are now 8,000. And now I'm going to just apply a substance map that I had already made. And you can see it's a default substance that comes with 3ds Max called corrugated metal. And I pipe that into the diffuse and the bump on this. And I'm going to apply this to all of these. So now we have that corrugated metal applied to all of these. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose Wallworm, Wallworm Model Tools, and Create WWMT from Selection. When I do that, it asks me, do I want to add all of these as separate models, or do I want them to be a single? I want them to be separate, so I'm going to have 10 models here. So you're going to see it created these 10 text helpers in the scene. I don't really need to do anything with those other than select. So when I have all of these Wallworm Model Tool helpers selected, I can just click Wallworm exporters export WMT to source models and it's going to export these 10 props and when it's done I can then select one of these and see things in the modify tab that includes uh, buttons to open up where it's compiled to so it's actually compiled to this path which is where I set our local game info to models and wallworm and now it has all of these models in here same with the materials. Now, I have to export the materials for this also. I can do it in several ways, but one way is just scrolling down to the export VMT and VTF button here. And I'm going to select this and export all of these. And at this point, all of my models are now in the game, including the texture. So now that we have Gmod loaded up, we can start a new game. I'm going to go to flat grass, start the game. And now if we hold down Q and go to our games, choose all, we're going to browse to the folder we exported these to, which we exported them to Wallworm, and we should be able to plant our planks here. Now, it appears that our planks are very small, so we exported these as very tiny objects. So, we'll come back in here to max, and sometimes to get yourself a sense of scale, We'll add a model in the scene that will be a player. So let's load Alex into here. And this will give us a sense of scale. So these are all a lot smaller than I'd like. So we're going to select all of those. And we're going to go ahead and scale these up to a size that might be uh, how we want them in the game. 
There we go. Now, immediately after doing that, I'm going to go to the utilities rollout, look for look for reset X form, click that, hit reset selected. And you may see the Woolworth model tool helpers fly to another location because they're linked to it, but don't worry about that. It won't really affect anything. And I'm actually just going to convert these to an edible poly. We don't really need to, but I'm going to do that to make the scene load faster next time. So again, select these uh, helpers, choose exporters, export WMT. So now this will fix our size issue. And I did see something in yellow on one of these. Oh, we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so we're going to go back to Gmod. So now we're back in Gmod. Go back to start new game. And let's see if our props are now a better size. We will find them under the Woolworm category. And we'll just plop them down and plop several of these down. So we have 10 new models we can use as we want. And here we have. So it's as simple as that to get your props in here. Again, my name is Sean Olson. You can learn all about me at my website, seanolson.net. And you can always get the latest version of Wallworm and all the Wallworm tools at wallworm.com. Thank you and have a good day.